We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. You gotta have a, like the why, and we know our why. So I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Millions and millions of people have done this already. You can get help, you can get a roadmap, you can save a lot of time, money, and frustration. <laughs> Welcome to the Value Add Podcast with K&K. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Value Add Podcast with K&K. Today, we have Salvatore Frigia here with us. Okay. Salvatore. Um, so sorry, I messed that oh, up. No, I was like, good. I was so worried about it, and now here we are. Um, Salvatore owns San Diego Premier Property Management, Tenant Finders, and he also has um, does coaching for social media for property managers. That's correct. We have an online uh, property management social media course that we uh, rolled out for property managers all across the country so that they can learn how to use social media better to get leads, extend their reach, and build their business and their brand. That's awesome because I feel like a lot of property management companies are pretty behind on social media and technology in general. So you're helping bring everyone into the 21st century. Absolutely. Well, I've benefited greatly from social media. And when I noticed the benefits in my businesses here locally, it was something that I wanted to share with the industry so that I could help some of those property managers all across the country utilize social media so that they can stay relevant. And I'll talk a little bit more about that because that's a big issue in today's industry. Yeah, that's something that we're really interested in because I feel like in a lot of aspects of real estate, property management just being one of them, people don't know how social media is going to benefit them. And there was always that kind of stigma that you didn't want to show your life um, to everyone. So uh, people would you know, make their profiles private or they didn't talk about work or and now it's just it's changed so much but I'm interested to hear from you how property managers can really benefit from that because I don't think a lot of people know or take the time to utilize it sure no one of the first things that I talk about when I'm talking with other property managers is that if you're talking about property management on social media you are losing and they look at me like I'm absolutely crazy <laughs> And I say that, you know, the, the truth is, is that you want to use yourself because we're all brands now. People want to relate to people. They don't want to relate to businesses. And they don't so, want to get the hard sell every day. Absolutely. Yeah. They want to learn who you are. So they, you have to put in place the know, like, and trust factor. Mm -hmm. And by showing who you are, what you do, um, people want to relate to that. And they mm -hmm. do relate to that. That's the reason why most of us follow certain people on our social. We want to see where they're going. Oh, I've eaten at that restaurant. Or I've been there on vacation. Or I go mm -hmm. there. Or, I have that similar yep. type of car. They want to relate to you. I'm more of you know non-business style. They want to you want you to be more relatable. Mm -hmm. So I try and tell property managers that it's not always that hard sell. It's not always about property management. Is to show their office culture, which is really important. To show what they're doing, who they are, what they like to do, and then just to one of the biggest things I talk about is an acronym that I throw out there, and a lot of property managers can relate to this. Is to utilize the acronym uh, CAVE. C A V E. Community awareness, value, and educate. So on the community I side, like on the community side, I talk to people about show people in your community that are doing incredible things. Mm -hmm. Spotlight people who have supported your business and your brand, and you'll watch your community grow. And then on for the A on awareness is uh, people, you know, they say you need to introduce yourself until you no longer need to introduce yourself. Yeah. Well, when you're in property management, guess what? You just need to keep introducing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So people need totally. to be aware of who you are and what you do. You need to make sure that your pictures and your videos have you in it so that they can recognize you. Otherwise, how can they do business with you if they don't know who you are? Right. And then the V for the value side. This is really important. You know, it's not about what we can get from people but it's what we can, people can get from us. Mm -hmm. If you're not providing value, there really is no reason why people can, can, should consume your content. I mean, think about that. What do we do when we're watching a television show or we're listening to radio and you know the show sucks or the song's not that good? We change the channel. Change the station. So yeah. you don't want people changing the channel on your content. You want them coming back looking for more. And then on the E for that acronym for CAVE, the education side, so big. Now, it's always you know, misconstrued as educate in the form of like what you guys do in terms of educating and multifamily investing. That's great, but you also need to educate people on why you love doing what you do. Educate yeah. them on your purpose, your why. If people can relate to that, then you're going to be much more um, relatable to them and they, they will find a way to connect with you. It's very powerful to use that acronym CAVE whenever you're putting anything out on social media. And that's something I try and teach property managers all across the country. It's so true. Bam. About your, yeah. Bam. It's so true about your Nuggets. story, though, because I think yeah. 
I, for a lot of us, like we know our story and we're not that impressed by it. So we think nobody really wants right. to know. And I think I don't know that much. So, you know, but somebody else might not know anything and they might find that really most, interesting. So right? most. Absolutely. I think it's kind of going, uh, you have to take yourself, like stop thinking about yourself <laughs> and yeah. think about other people. And that's been a huge learning curve. It's just a little mind shift, mm -hmm. but it is hard to kind of make that transition. And once you do, it's like, the floodgates open. Exactly. But, yeah. The epiphany. I mean, yeah. I had that epiphany probably back in, I want to say 2016. Okay. Um, at that point, I was basically, I was tired of doing the same thing mm -hmm. that every other property management company here in San Diego was doing. I was just tired of competing and I wanted to start dominating, but I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And I came across, I believe it was either, I want to say it was Gary V, Grant Cardone, or Ty Lopez. One of, the, one of those three yeah. guys on Periscope. You guys remember Periscope? Yep. <laughs> okay, Periscope I believe is owned by Twitter now. Yep. Mm -hmm. But back then it was Periscope and Meerkat. Yes. And those were the two video-based platforms that were hot. And I came across, I think I'll just say Gar I'll just say Grant Cardone. And I realized I was watching a little bit and I was so drawn in. Yeah. And I started watching more and more and I realized, "Oh my god, you no longer need radio or television to broadcast to the masses now." And it was like like you talk about the floodgates. Yeah. It hit me where I thought this is how I'm going to separate myself from all the other property managers here in San Diego and across the country. I am gonna use this medium, I'm gonna use this platform to build my audience. I don't know how, I don't know what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna do it this way. Yeah. And that was my introduction to social media, the power of social media and social media marketing mm -hmm. that has allowed me to get, you know, not only massive local recognition, but national recognition from, you know, real estate powerhouses such as Zillow, Inman Real Estate News. That type of stuff helps when you're building a brand or when you're trying to get recognized. And I have to say when if if I Google your name, which of course I did, mm -hmm. there's a whole slew of articles and things yeah. that you've been featured on, yeah. um, talking about your business and talking about social media for property managers. So it's uh, the one thing I feel like people need to know is, you know, how long is it going to take them to get results? Because I feel like people maybe try this for a few weeks or a month and then they go like, oh, well, you know, it's already too many people are doing it and right. it's too hard or I don't have time. How do you get or get through to people to let them know? I mean, this is more of the long game. This isn't the short, quick, sure. you know, instant no, you're gratification. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. And the first thing that we all know is that you got to put the work in, right? I yeah. mean, come on. You can't expect, that's no matter what Nothing you do. good is easy. Media, yeah. It's anything. If yeah. you want to be not yeah. just good, if you want to be great, you've got to put the work in. Yeah. And that takes time. And when I hear people bellyache and say, oh, you know, it takes time. And I say, well, then you're going to get what you put into it. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know, don't come crying when you're no longer relevant because the guy down the street has a greater audience than you. Yeah. Because what I try and explain to a lot of property managers is guys and gals, the disruptors are coming. Yeah. And they are well financed. Yep. And they have names like Zillow and they have yeah. names like Facebook and they're Redfin and they're Amazon. And when they come and they disrupt this industry like they're yeah. trying to do in the real estate side of the industry, you are not going to be relevant anymore because you haven't connected with your audience. You haven't connected with your community. Right. And they have a lot more money and they know how to do it a lot better. And they already have all of the inventory and you're feeding it to all of them. You're putting it on all their platforms. Yep. And they just make a small little switch. And once they turn that on, they're going to eat your lunch. Right. And that's the way it's going to be. And a lot of them don't want to hear that. And you got to understand also that there's a lot of property management is probably an older demographic. I like what I'm seeing mm -hmm. lately where a lot of younger people are coming yep. into it because we need that vibe because sure. the industry desperately needs that vibe. When I first got into property management back in 2002, um, you know, it was an end game for most real estate brokers per se it was their end game they would just live off of some residual income and yeah you know if the management got done okay that's fine yeah but there wasn't any zest into it there wasn't any excitement there wasn't systems there you know we didn't even have cloud why computing. did you get into it just curious that's a great question i'm I, I stumbled into it completely by chance i was asked by a couple of real estate agents um, in a brokerage that I was a real estate agent at myself in Bay Park. So you did real estate first then? I did real estate first. So what's your kind of career just so we go back? Like, sure. So I you... went real estate agent, realtor, uh, broker, owned brokerages. How long have you been doing management. this? How long have you been in real Since estate? Since 2002, I've been mm. licensed. Okay, cool. Okay. Right. So when I first started... Um, 16 years, okay, yeah, 17 they, years. They knew yeah. that I worked a lot with real estate investors. Okay. You know, I, didn't, I don't really have the emotion 
to real estate as like the drapes and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Like, give me the hard numbers. <laughs> yeah. I want to see the numbers. Are we making money or yeah, not? Like, exactly. Yeah. So they, they knew that I worked a lot with investors okay. and they were starting a property management company. They wanted to know if I'd be interested in doing that. And I had never managed property before. So I thought, you know, worst case scenario, I would learn something. Best case scenario, I could kind of hedge myself. So I agreed to do it, and we put together a really good management company. We had a lot of accounts. We were profitable, and so much so that we sold that company to a couple of Keller Williams agents two years later cool. for profit. Um, at that time, I realized, man, you know, this is pretty interesting. You know, my clients were saying, hey, you're good at this. Plus, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, but the real estate market was pretty frothy at that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whispers were in the air, you know, what's going to happen? Yep. And that was right after the dot-com, right after 9-11. Right. So, so things were starting to move in yeah, group. Yeah. I told Elizabeth, I said, you know, listen, we need to hedge our income. All my income was from real estate sales, my commissions. And right. I was worried. And she said, well, okay. And I said, let's start our own management company. And she said, okay. So with 500 bucks and a couple of holdover clients from the sale of that last company, we started San Diego Premier Property Management, and that's 16 years later, and awesome. you know, now we're managing $75 million in, in shared-owned assets, and we've leveraged off to other companies, and you know, all the good has come from that decision, but that's how I, I originally got started in property management. Very cool. Interesting. Yeah. So can you kind of dive in, like, just tell us what kind of properties you focus on, sure. and then why? Okay. So we manage single family homes, condominiums, townhouses, and small apartment complexes, typically under 16 units. Okay. We don't have on site. Uh, we try and stay away from that. We try and control the process as much as possible from our perspective. Um, we're at a point in our career where we probably turn down more properties than we take on. And that's because we are focused on certain um, areas of town that we want properties in. Uh, you know, we, in the beginning, and we've talked about this, you grab what you can get because yeah. you're building, you know, you're trying to grow. And as you go through that process, you start to realize that maybe that's not the best usage of your time, um, space and money to be servicing properties that are outside of areas that you want to be in. So we've now, t you know, curtailed that to areas that, w that are I interesting to us, uh, more affluent areas, beach style communities. And, you know, we handle those properties there. But we do that because it makes financial sense, but also because we d I don't want to send my team to places that they don't want to go to. We know that there's what they call a cycle of suck. Yeah. And that cycle, <laughs> and we, we've talked about yeah. that a little yeah. bit. That cycle of suck is where you've got you know a sucky owner, a sucky property, and then you get sucky tenants. Yep. And we don't want to deal with that headache. And what I'm learning from just the little bit that we've talked about your property management business and gotten to know you a little bit is that you, you're all about systems. Yeah. So if there's a property or an owner that you would take on that could poten potentially compromise your system, that causes a lot of inefficiency, which would... It's a deal killer, it's basically. Deal killer. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So when did you kind of start making, like, like how long are we like, we got to just this is it and we're moving forward this way. Like, How yeah. did you create your systems? Well, you I would, I would love yeah. to just be like, oh, you know, we came up with this great idea. It's not, yeah. it's through trial and error. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know, there's a, there's a word in our industry, burnout. Mm -hmm. That's yep. real. And you For see sure. it and you see people who are like, property management sucks. And you're like, whoa, you know, what happened to you <laughs> in that situation <laughs> yeah. that you're Jesus. at this point? Yeah. 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 And it's because of dealing with all that, you know, the stress mm -hmm. of having to deal with, you know, people who, don't haven't bought the property right, um, don't care about the property, and then you're now taking on their responsibility, and it's not fair. And you put yourself in those positions, and very quickly you can get to that burnout scenario. Yep. So from our perspective, you know, I like to think I, I call myself a property management social media pioneer. Well, when I think about it, we've pioneered a lot of different things along the way. So I'll go back to say 2007 ish or something when okay. cloud computing came on for the property management industry. A lot of brokers were scared to put their what they call book yeah. in the cloud. First of yeah. all, nobody knew what the cloud was. <laughs> yeah. like, it was this ominous this, thing. This thing yeah. I'm yeah. going to give. But they, you know, they held that tight to their chest, mm -hmm. their book. That was all their clients and all their way of making money, and it was very important to them. And they didn't want to put it in the cloud. And some people still have it. And some people still have that system, unfortunately. Jeez. And we were one of the first to realize that that was the way to go. And we got with a company called Buildium, which is now okay. the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Buildium's now I've the world's leading yeah. property management social media a software company. Okay. And we got with them early on. I know that we were one of the first in California. I, I absolutely know we're one of the first in San Diego to be with Buildium. But we put all of our clients on there and we systemized right from that point. 
and we jumped out, I would say, at least a decade ahead of everybody else oh, yeah. in terms wow. of systemizing, in terms of learning how to you know, put processes in place that avoid that burnout scenario that allowed us to focus on better accounts as opposed to more accounts. Because there's two ways, you know, we, we've talked about this a little bit. You know, everybody wants to say, how many doors do you have? How many yeah. properties are you managing? Which, honestly, and what I said to you is, how much money do you make? Boom, that's that's yeah. all we care. Yeah. That's it. You don't do property management to how many doors. you probably Because you want to make the residual income. I mean, and, it's just that monthly income. And that mindset, Kenny, is just not existent in a lot of property management. I agree. And it needs to be. Because that's what's so important. So when you focus on better properties as opposed to more, it's a mind changer. It, 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 it'll switch your perspective on the business. You know, and, and going back to, you know, putting building them in the cloud computing and starting from that process and the mm -hmm. systems in place that has allowed us to be consistent consistent in our marketing consistent in our processes consistent in the type of service that our clients now come to expect from us and that's got us to the point where we're one of the best in san diego yeah and to that point i was actually uh, oh this is yeah this is yeah with as far as like reviews and things go like most property management companies have horrible yeah. reviews and it's just kind of accepted now i feel like a lot of people are like well every property management company is gonna have bad reviews and we even called um yelp and she called yelp and they're like hey look, they said that this yelp is probably yeah. the worst industry for you Absolutely. you guys get crushed so crystal went on and looked you up she's like holy crap like well the, the only reason why people the, the only reason why people go on to leave a review for property management companies typically is when is they're when mad they've had yeah, the yeah. so you pissed yeah. off a tenant or something like that yep. happens i'm going to get back to your point though crystal because you said something that's really valid and you mentioned that most people have come to just accept that yeah and that's not right yeah. and it's even happening in our industry and i'll tell you I when agree. i'm hearing that that really ticks me off a little bit. You hear people saying, you know what? It's actually better to have between 4.1 and 4.3 on your reviews because that shows that you um, are doing a good job for your clients. And I think, wait a huh? minute. That, you know, if you're going to accept that level, yeah. then, then you're taking the easy way out. It is not acceptable to be at 4.1 to 4.3. Okay, you should be. Your goal at, is five stars. Your goal is five yeah. stars. If you yeah. fall short of that, I understand, but your goal should always be five stars. One hundred percent. Exactly. So when you justify that, you're just making excuses for the crappy. Well, you're basically like you're I'll, I'll settle for third place <laughs> exactly. or fourth place or whatever. And, and that's yeah. something that we you know we need in the industry to get that level up. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree because it's. I mean, clearly it's possible because I think I saw you have like thirty three Google reviews that are like almost five stars. It's right. like. I think you have like a corner of one star missing or something like that. I mean, it's it's it, it, you've basically got five star reviews across all platforms that I and can see. And we're proud of that. And we yeah. push that. It's not mm -hmm. by it's not by just happening. We push that. We want to make focus. sure that not only are we handling our tenants properly, but we're also handling our owners. And it's all part of that community and that engagement. That happens from, you know, people calling the office. They're not a number. They're not an address. They know who we are. Uh, we know who they are. We stay in constant communication with them through our social media, our, our funnels, our email marketing. All of that is by design. Do you feel like um, because you have a smaller portfolio, because you're not you're not trying to go, I have a thousand, I don't mm -hmm. even know what you have, but mm -hmm. um, that you can create that community because it's smaller. So you, you're, you're more like, hey, I'd rather be Louis Vuitton. Even though I'm a small store in Louis mm -hmm. Vuitton over here, I still do $25 million. Right. But Bloomingdale is a sixty million. You're like, wait a minute, that store's ten times the size. Right. You're well, more like, I want to. If everybody comes in, I know your name. I'm going to give you the five star service and all this. Rather, just that's more important to you, obviously. And that's how you're going to win. I think there needs to be a balance of the two, Kenny. It okay. would be it would be ignorant for me to say that on a higher end that wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But it's doable on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's doable on both sides. It's about understanding the process and being able to just scale it. Um, you know, f from our perspective of of what we do, I often say we're not the biggest property management company here in San Diego, but we're the most known. Yeah. When I walk into That's... when I walk into an investor group meeting, or I walk into one of the property management group meetings here in town, we may not have as many properties as some of these other companies, but everybody in that ro room knows who I am. That's awesome. Congrats Absolutely. on that. that. Well, and but I that's don't say that work. to be braggadocious. No, that's I don't say that because you've I you've worked you know, hard to get there. I have. Yeah. And other people in other cities and other states should be doing the same to build that audience themselves. Because you could always have rapport and be able to leverage that audience, if not anything, just for brand awareness. And it's so important. Yeah, and that leads me to the next um, what was kind of I was actually thinking, I'm like, how did I meet you? Mm -hmm. And I think I was talking to Skyler. 
That's right. Our mutual friend yep. in Phoenix, yeah. Skyler Irvine. And he said, hey, I'm going to connect you guys. And then we ended up having a quick meetup in La Jolla. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of like what, what interests me is that you use social media to build your business. If you can like explain how and how you do that, and maybe it's simple. And then also, you don't just do that. You teach other competition competitors in your space how to right. do the same thing, which is Mind would be like, wait a second here. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to teach somebody else how to that get business. That's what you do. Yeah. yeah. And, there, and yeah. there's probably, I mean, I would, I just know you because it's like listening to Grant and these guys, I'm realizing we live in a world where we used to be taught, no, competition's bad. You should yeah. crush them. And you're like, no, I'm going to collab because it's like I can teach them because even though I'm going to talk to 100 people, 5% of them might listen to me. Right. And then another 95, so you're just going to go back and do the same shit because you're lazy. That's so true. And just getting back to how we met, I just think that's the power of social media marketing. Exactly. So um, Skylar Irvine, who we mentioned in Phoenix, Arizona, is doing incredible things over there. He's a visionary yeah. in my opinion. We did a podcast um, with him, Zoom. Yeah. yeah. yeah so he'll yeah. be on Zoom. Really, yeah. really cool guy. Um, we met on back in the days of Snapchat when I was heavy on Snapchat. So okay. Funny. And, um, you know, yeah, Snapchat for property management. Yeah. Can you, yeah. Can you imagine that's that? awesome. I mean, everybody <laughs> was like, what? You know? and I was like, no, you know, yeah, yeah we got to be on there. So yeah. we met through that, and um, we've got a lot of um, – um, similarities in both. I lived in Scottsdale for many years oh, okay. and stuff okay. like that. Okay. So, okay. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so we've we've developed that relationship, which is cool. And then he put us in contact. So that's cool how dude. we came about. Very cool, knowledgeable dude. Absolutely. Yep. So, yes. Yeah, so going back to how I got started with, with the social media was just, like I mentioned, not wanting to compete anymore and just wanting to dominate. And being able to – I tell property managers back when – you guys were going to industry conventions. I was going to social media conventions. So awesome. I was meeting with some of the best and brightest real estate entrepreneurs and social media influencers in the world. I was just trying to figure out what the hell are they doing? Exactly. What are they yeah. doing? What are they doing? Yeah. And I, I'm, I was in their ear. I mean, I was probably the guy they were like, okay, you know, back yeah. off. You're a little <laughs> annoying. Yeah. But I was so intrigued. I wanted to find yeah. out what are they doing. And I was able to do so. I was able to gather that information come back to San Diego and put together a property management social media strategy that worked, yeah. you know? So I'm, I'm grateful for those opportunities when I was not going to industry conventions, when I didn't do, you know, the, the real estate conventions and I was just hanging with people who were, you know, really big on the social media side. Mm -hmm. That was so important to me and I got so much from that. So Interesting. the value that I got out of that experience and the ability to reach people and to grow my audience and to be able to impact the way I've seen, I mean, we grew our business 46.5% last year revenue growth, pure in-pocket revenue, and I contribute that directly to social media wow. marketing. And it's not a pie-in-the-sky number. I have all the analytics. I'm a numbers guy. Yeah. I look at where these leads coming from. I can tell. You're very from. detailed. No bullshit. Where are they yeah. coming from? You know, it's coming from banging Facebook. It's coming from banging, you know, content marketing that we put out on Google ads and stuff like that. It's coming directly from our social media presence. And I know that. So... For 46.5% year over year revenue growth, that can make the difference in a business big time. I think anybody would be happy with that kind of growth. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's the reason why I went out there and put together the property management social media boot camp course uh -huh. and you know, tried to get a lot of property managers on board because we're teaching in that course how to use Facebook, how to use Instagram, how to use video to leverage yourself to get leads, extend your reach, and build your business and your brand. Yeah. And it was received really well. Now, getting back to your point, Kenny, where you're saying that you can get the information out there, but how many people are actually going to use it? That's the unfortunate side. As I look back and I see a lot of the people who go through it, it's, it's slow coming for them to implement a lot of these social media um, tactics and to get out there in front of a camera and to get out there and do stuff other than just the plain old boring sitting with a tie in front of a you know a green screen and talk about you know security deposit returns. Yeah, I mean nobody <laughs> really wants to hear that. You know? so, yeah. But don't you think like I I feel just from having a property management company in the past myself uh, and like letting that company run me. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of property managers. Like you're just barely trying to keep your head above water. That's why the company's no, running you. Just gonna, you have the all same these question. ideas in your head of these things that you want to do. But at the end of the day, you're just like, oh, I'll try next week. And then some other thing yeah. blows up, some other bomb drops or, you know, or whatever. Well, so, I mean, honestly, we're sitting yeah. here that we ran a company and we did other stuff and we realized at the end of the day, this is not for us mm -hmm. and burnout, right? right? Because we had other stuff going on. And you look at you and you're like, 
Yeah, like you love private management. Well, you're able to but, be but here no, today. But, but yeah. we yeah. were just talking out there. Crazy. You said, Kenny, there's yeah. two private managers. Either you're a property manager in right. the, like in there, you know, pulling weeds or running around, or you're a property, you know, manager. You own, you own the business. Yeah. That's yeah. you're running it, and that's how you're able to do this. And if you are, if you're in the weeds and running around, it's almost impossible to do what you're doing. Yeah, you absolutely nailed it, Kenny. You're right. So I wrote an Amazon best-selling book in 2011, and in that book, I stated something that still I think about all the time: is that when my wife and I used to go to dinners or we go to events and we meet people, people used to like in conversation say, "Man, don't you get tired of?" You know, cleaning, to uh, fixing toilets. Yeah, and I, and I like, giggle, I giggle a little bit. And I'd be like, not fixing you know, any toilets. I don't fix toilets. No, that's not what I do. And you touched on it, Kenny. There are two different property managers. There's the property manager who's the real estate minded guy, and when the te when the owner, the tenant calls, he's out there, you know, fixing whatever needs to be done. He thinks he's doing a great job for his owner, and that's his idea of what property management is. And then there's someone like myself, where I'm a real estate entrepreneur. I've built a property management built multiple property management companies, but I'm not a property manager. If you think about it, I'm more of a marketing company. And that goes back yeah. to, you know, Gary Vee and what Grant Cardone talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the business card or the sign outside may say property management, but we're we're banging it as a marketing company. You yeah. know, so it's a different mindset on what we do. Yes, I'm here today and I'm able to enjoy and do different things. And my wife and I go around and you know, we're not out there servicing properties. We have systems and team in place that does that. Awesome. That's the big difference between the two. Yeah. So what do you, um, so when you're teaching, when you, with your course, if you could dive in a little yeah. bit, what is somebody expecting to get out of that? Like, obviously if they got to do the work, but what are you kind of teaching? It sounds like you're using Instagram, Facebook. I don't know if you're using LinkedIn, but what platforms are you teaching? What are you using? What are they expecting to get out of that course? And if they follow it, what are kind of yeah. some results or what they should they expect? back from, you know, doing sure, it. Sure, sure. So we, we approached it with, you know, we could have hit all the different social media platforms, but it'd be overkill. So we took the three that I think most property managers honestly should be focusing mm -hmm. on, and that's Facebook, Instagram, and then the use of video. Video is not a platform, but it's so essential in every platform yeah. today that if you don't understand how to harness the power of video, you're probably going to be at a major disadvantage. Yep. You know, they yep. say, I think uh, by 2020, 85% of all mobile Next content- year. Next year, be everybody's saying that. Yep. Yeah. So if you don't understand that, think about how disadvantaged you are, you know, by not putting videos out there. So in the social media course, we talk about, you know, how to utilize, how to actually set up a Facebook ad that works. And now there's tons of content out there. You can just Google about how to set up a Facebook ad. But when you tailor it to property management and then you tailor it to, you know, actually making one that's going to get you leads mm -hmm. and how to do it, that's really important. Yeah. And we walk through step by step. Now, I'd like to take credit for the fact that I did all of the content in the social media course, but I didn't. I had, you know, five real estate influencers help me, and they're all major real estate influencers. They're all, you know, have their own podcasts, have their own shows, crushing it in whatever they're doing from um, loans all the way through to, you know, real estate agents. Awesome. And they actually collaborated with me Smart. on the property management social media course to go through step by step and show property managers how to utilize these platforms to help them in their business from day one. Smart. Yeah, so we did that with Facebook, we jumped into Instagram, we showed them how to set up their Instagram profile to optimize it, you know, to make sure that it's actually working for them, how to utilize hashtags, all the basics, and then we, we do a little bit of, um, you know, I would say advanced stuff in there too, but we, we walk you through all the setup process and what it would, what you should do to get business from those two platforms. And then we talk a lot about video and the importance of using video, getting out from behind the green screen, going to show your city and the area that you live in. That's so big. You know, one of the things that I was fortunate about when I did it was we live here in San Diego. Yeah. So whether doesn't you want like to be here. me or not, whether yeah. you care to see me or not, you want to see that ocean, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> you want to see our beautiful downtown. Yep. You want to go around and see what's happening when you're, you know, when it's 20 degrees where you are and I'm running around <laughs> yeah. in La Jolla. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, know, you want to you you care less yeah. about me. You want to see what's going on yeah. in the That's city. That's smart. That's a good point. So I yeah. leveraged our beautiful city here in San Diego. Yeah. And there, as I've traveled the country, and I'm sure you guys have traveled the country and the world too, there's beautiful places wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And you can make your city or wherever beautiful by sharing it with whomever. So I teach a lot of property managers that, you know, use that as your backdrop. Get out of the office. We don't want to see, you know, you sitting at a green screen. 
Show the people in your office, you know, leverage, give kudos to team members and stuff like that, but get out and show your city. Teach people about what's going on in your city, what's happening, are there events, cultural events, whatever. You know, it's so boring to see people just walking through properties with the same old, here's the kitchen, here's the bathroom. After a while, unless you're, you know, managing multi-million dollar properties, that gets old really quick. Yeah. So you've got to leverage something else for your content. I think it's true, though. I mean, because like I said to you the other day and you said it's the biggest compliment. I hadn't met you in person, but I felt like I knew you already. And so there's that aspect of it. But also, too, people think that they don't have anything to say or anything to talk about. So that's absolutely like such an easy thing to do is show your city. So you don't have anything to say. Start with doing that. And then hopefully the kind of ball starts rolling and you start getting some ideas. Absolutely. That's that's a great approach because we all started out that way too. I mean, when I first started, I I didn't know what to talk about either. And I just... (laughs) I just shared my wife and I, we were driving around, going to different properties, checking them out, and I thought that would be interesting. And I got a great compliment from somebody who said, you know, I never thought property management was interesting until I seen you walk through a property and you were talking about how you were going to renovate that property. It was one of our own properties Mm -hmm. that we were going to do a renovation on and reposition. And I walked through and I was just, you know, nonchalantly talking about, you know, hey, we're meeting out with the contractor here today. We're going to take this wall down and do that. And that, you know, resonated with this audience this person, you know, uh, who thought it was interesting. And that's how, you know, we built our following is by showing different aspects of it other than just the boring property management side. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Like the next question I have is when we we scaled so fast and I don't think that was a good thing um, for us. But I know a lot of people were like, How'd you grow so fast? And how'd you get leads and this? And I and I didn't really, I never paid attention because we grew so fast. So I never had to worry about getting in business. And we really, we're tur- we started turning right business. Yeah. But you probably hear is why do you think people have a, why do you think people struggle so much just to like grow their business? Do you think that is because they're property managers and they're doing all this and they don't even have time to think about marketing and trying to bring in more business? Or do you think that people just don't, understand like how to just go get new business uh, that, that's a that's a big question i'll unfold it a little bit um first off i think that i can only go back to the mistakes i made mm-hmm. i can't mm-hmm. speak for other people mm-hmm. and i'll tell you one of the reasons why i look back and i feel like i didn't grow my businesses as fast as i could have and i'd be a critic regardless of how fast they've grown that's just who i am yeah is the reinvestment of money Okay. As soon as that money's made, it needs to go right back into the business. And I know that, you know, when you start making a little bit of money, you can tend to, you know, allocate that money in other places that maybe is not the best for you. But I would say that that's a big reason why people don't grow as fast as they're not pumping that money right back into the business. The other thing is the marketing. You know, if you if you're not turning the wheel, nothing else matters. I don't care how good the office is set up, how solid your team is, how cool your logo is. Yeah. If you're not generating business through your marketing, you have nothing. And you have to keep generating the business. You've got to put money behind the marketing to generate the business. And I think a lot of people um, don't follow that aspect. They don't realize that. Um, and they become complacent in that area. So, And then I think also touching base on what you said, you know, a lot of people – don't want to have the headache of it. I hear that a lot in property management. Oh, I just want to get to 50 accounts and I'm good. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you're good what? You know? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? You know, yeah. you're good why? So you, you have to you have to have a mindset of what you want to do. What's the end game? You know, is you know, we always look at things from a perspective of multiple end game strategies. Mm-hmm. You know, if I need to if I wanted to have a liquidity event and sell my my company and my position to do so, yeah, I can do that. If I want to keep the company as a, an additional passive income and move on to other ventures, yeah, we could do that too. Mm-hmm. So it's you know it's that mindset of what you want to do with this with this business that you're building is important. And I don't think a lot of property managers take that on initially. It's just kind of something that maybe uh, you hear a lot of it now, and you're going to hear a lot of it more as this market turns. Real estate agents are going to get into property you're already, management. You're they're telling off. me that uh, the other well, that's night. That's how they make it through when they're not yeah. selling homes. So, and yeah. that's dangerous. But they are. They're going to, you know, try and pick up a few accounts here and there, and you know, try and make ends meet until maybe the market comes around or something like that. So, a lot of property it's managers. Yep. That's how they start. You yeah. Know, that they they can never really get back into right. the sales portion of it. They've lost momentum, which is so important. 
Yeah, and that's kind of the thing when you you hear of a realtor that also does property management. I'm always concerned because I'm thinking, okay, well, you're going to make more money selling homes, and then you're kind of like trying to do this little property management gig yeah. on the side, and it's not really benefiting the owner either yeah. because you're you're splitting your time, you know. So that's hard. But I think one of the things that you touched on as far as like. The one thing that I think is attractive about property management, and maybe some people are just so buried right now that they can't think through this, is that they're creating something that's valuable. Like when you're a real estate agent, it's not valuable unless you're in it working. Or you own the brokerage. So now you have this thing that has these contracts that is valuable. Like if you wanted to sell it or you wanted to bring on a partner and become more silent in your business or whatnot but that i think that's huge i mean that was the the benefit that we learned is like wow or you can buy the property yeah off market or yeah when, you can find for a deal so. because they like you or like hey you know what i'll leave some meat on the bone or something so you that's know? just so big because you just you just like totally hit it out of the park with that you know a saleable asset when you're creating something you know back when 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 i was first getting into this that was so enticing for me I wanted something that was potentially saleable, and I realized really early on that being a real estate agent, you know, is is not saleable. No, nope. okay, you know, you you live. In You're your line. business. That's it. Yeah, that's it. You know, you're, you can put you're, together a really. You good are your team, next deal, right? You, you or whatever are your they next say. Yeah. Thing. So yeah. having a saleable asset is so big, but you know, I, I just I, I think that the moonlighting of real estate agents and property management is never a good thing. Yeah, and I, I'm. A lot of the properties that we get that come from real estate agents, and I'm not knocking real estate agents. I'm just saying that we live in the most litigious state in the country. Absolutely. Okay. Every year, there's a ton of new stuff that I have to get my team up to speed on. I have to get up to speed on uh, to make sure that we're in compliance with a whole host of legality issues. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, a lot of properties that we get that have been managed by real estate agents, you know, there's, there's major issues with. Or we get them when, you know, it's gone bad. And the smart ones realize that that's not in their best interest. They're better off making between three and six percent commission, and then they send over their referrals to us. We have an ironclad referral agreement that we put. It's a CAR form, California Association of Realtor form, where we sign off saying, "Hey, your client is your client," and the moment that they mention, "Hey, we're thinking about selling," that goes right back to you. Cool. And that's awesome. we're not in the business of poaching anybody's business. That's not how we would get a name that would last in terms of, mm-hmm. of getting accounts from, from realtors. Mm-hmm. And you know some of the best real estate uh, realtors and real estate agents in the city send us referrals, awesome. and they're smart to do so because they can concentrate on getting their business the way they should, and they know that their clients are safe. and you know, Happy with a, you, yeah. yeah. We have yeah. a great relationship, and it's, it's been really interesting to foster that over the years. And we knew early on that you know those accounts coming from those agents needed help. Yeah, I mean, and I think, too, having a great referral partner for anyone or great referral partners just makes you – it builds your rapport with those people as well. That you have experts on your team that can help handle any aspect of the process that they need help with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, Kenny, you mentioned also about being able to buy stuff. Man, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Most of the deals that we have have come through our clientele. Exactly. That, that's, that's, yeah. that's what people don't get. I love yeah. it. It's, yeah. it's abs- We're the first ones to know everything that's going on with that property. You know, we, we've most likely we've put that tenant in place. Okay. Mm-hmm. We understand all the repairs that have been done need to be done. Yep. We can put together an offering package that is very attractive. Um, doesn't have uh, realtor fees included. Uh, doesn't have, you know, uh, repair issues there's no loss of rental income during the time when we can do it and we have you know our last three or four deals that we've put together we've had like 350 percent you know uh you know built on that yeah money pull out when we've liquidated those properties and it's just come from that involvement with property management which would be incredible see that's that's that that's is, attractive no, that's a beauty yourself. that's yeah. a great that's a great side of it. that's for sure i mean that's why i mean even guys that do commercial brokerage yeah that are smart that don't spend all their commission <laughs> there's so many realtor there. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um they start to learn as they get experience they're like you know they're calling and they're like i'm not going to show this deal i'm going to buy the dmdr right. i'm going to raise money i mean that's how these guys have built portfolios i'm like right. you guys have one of the best jobs you can make commission reinvest it and then you get to see these deals that sometimes we never see we're like what do you mean you found that why didn't you give it to me it's too good i'm not giving it to you so well and i always say you should drink your own kool-aid if you're in real estate why don't you own real estate that's concerning (laughs) you know so it's like if if that's your business and that's really what you're passionate about then Mm -hmm. you should also 
do that yourself. That's so. just such a big misnomer in our industry yeah. too. It's so funny. So many people just don't grasp that concept. Mm -hmm. And we were just you know? talking about it's there, so and, and this is another point which we didn't get to. It, this is really true, and I think we all agree, and some people might not agree. There is a difference of a person that owns a property management company that doesn't own any real estate than yeah. somebody that owns a property management company that actually right. owns property that's bought and sold and rehabbed and gone through the right. sell and exchange and all that. You cannot sit here and have a conversation with somebody across, you know, the table and speak, you know, honestly right. and just understand where they're coming from. Right. And I think you do manage and and basically approach everything differently once you've owned and operated and you've actually had to evict somebody you took the hit it was your money not somebody else's you know i mean you know the whole song right. of dance. having yeah. skin in the game always makes a difference yeah and, and what you know when you're speaking about something as opposed to you know when you're just regurgitating information that you've heard right and we yeah. have a lot of that in our industry we have a lot of that on social media you see that a lot too i mean you know the people who are out there real recognizes real i say that a lot yeah you know the people who are out there who are doing it um the market that we're getting into right now, and you guys talk a lot about multifamily, the market we're getting into right now, you're going to start seeing a lot of that, uh, a lot of the silliness start happening. It, uh, yeah. And it probably already is start happening. You know, we see it from our side, from the property management side. We know right away when somebody's not positioned properly in their asset. They come to us and, you know, they've got yeah. concerns. They need somebody in ASAP. Now, we all want to get our properties leased up right away. But there's a difference between you contacting me on the 5th and needing somebody in by the 12th. Yeah, absolutely. And then, I, then I, when I start to peel back the onion and find out, well, why is this? Well, the property's been sitting vacant for two months, okay? Why has the property been sitting vacant for two months? Well, because we were asking $300 more than market rate. Okay, so why are you asking $300 more than market? Well, it's we just changed out all the doorknobs. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you just changed <laughs> yeah, out all yeah. the doorknobs, but you want $300 That's more, you, you know, yeah. and then you start oh to realize gosh. why, you know, this individual is what I like to call, and it's probably not the best term, but it's the truth. And I mentioned this one. We met at the event the other day. It's the dumb money. Yeah. When yeah. the dumb money starts flooding into the market, it's a tell. And, you know, there's a few tells as property manager that I get. That's one of them. The other one is a lot of my friends around uh, town start to contact me, wanting me to speak or to come to their uh, real estate uh, event and, you know, talk a little bit about property management. And usually that's a sign that there's some hesitance in the market. There's a lot of events happening right now. As in, I hope you Everybody's guys are I hope you're listening. somewhere. Yeah. These are, you know, you have, it's funny that we've all sitting at the table here. It's like you got into real estate a couple of years for us, but we, this is called as, you know, one of the, one of the bigger real estate investors I know that owns a lot of stuff. He said, the one tip I'll tell you is know your market cycle. That's and if right. anybody's listening, you have people here that are, that are on the forefront and we're talking about a market cycle. Absolutely. And you start listening to vocabulary words and you start going, am I hearing you know, property management? Oh, you're getting a property management. I mean, this is what you start hearing, or yeah. dumb money or things like that. There's a reason because last cycle, we were talking about the same exact stuff. It was scarier, but right. I mean, it's the same Absolutely. conversation. But it's the same conversation, but we have short memories. And yeah. I did a post on it the other day. I think you saw it too. On we were at the um, off market deal and cocktails event that yeah. you guys hosted, yeah. which yeah. was so went over so well. Um, I posted on Instagram that the buzzwords in the room were opportunity zones, equity repositioning. And I think, what was the other one? I forgot. Um, uh, we were talking about tax Trump law too. Yeah. But, but so, you know. That's... So some of those buzzwords, you've got to listen to what people are saying because those are tells. Yeah. You know, and you're starting to see, especially on our side, we will get those people who need the property rented right away um, or they need that aggressive rental rate. And the justification is because they, they bought wrong. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people say, well, hey, you know, it's funny on that post, Kenny, you can look at the contrast in comments. All of my real estate friends commented, man, it's a great time. It's a great time. Yeah. And then all of my real estate investor friends. Run. Well, they were just yeah, not yeah. so yeah. much run. They were yeah. thinking like. What do you think is just happening? Just a little caution. You know, yeah. just deals that you might have pulled the trigger on two years ago, you probably wouldn't today. Yeah. And that's the difference in the thought process. Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're selling two buildings now. Right. In North Park. And we're exchanging into a 30 unit. And so we're going from 330 a door to 190 or something. Right, so you're scaling up more doors yes. and, 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 and more cash flow. You got it. Okay. So we're not looking to try to go into the neighborhood and go, let's reinvest and try to do the value add and right. do this. We just think like, okay, we've gained a lot of equity in these two properties. Let's just make the cash flow work for us and sit back and just kind of let's just 
watch what happens. Right. So we have something similar going on. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. I'm going to turn the page here yeah. a little bit. Um, so we are in the process. We have our last property that we're, we're repositioning the equity. Okay. We're liquidating out. We've got about six months left. And then we meet our tax requirements. We'll move past that. Okay. And at that point, we will not have anything vested in the San Diego market. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll be sitting liquid. Okay. Now, are you repositioning out of San Diego? Nope. Staying. You're staying. Okay. Yep. So a lot of people, when they talk about, you know, the San Diego market uh, being, you know, still having some legs left, you know, I don't say that there aren't deals out there. There's deals in every market. There's always, always deals. Regardless, always, right? yeah. regardless always deals, yeah. of good markets or yeah. bad markets, there's deals to be had. You just need to know how to go and get them. So I'll never be the guy who'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. San Diego's dead or whatever's dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, there's, there's people making tons of money out yep. in any bad market or any good market. Mm -hmm. just depends on how you structure it. But we are moving our money to a point of liquidity right now because Smart. I tell people, would you buy the same asset that you're selling right now at today's valuation? And most of them are like, oh, no way. That's something you need to look at. You I know? agree. I that's agree. That's something that's really important. So when we look back over our properties and we're like, whoa, okay, the last three years have been nice. Now it's time to you know, get in on the cycle at a different place, just yeah. at a different point. And it's not that there's anything wrong with San Diego. It's just the time right now is not the time huh. to, you know, maybe be go going into areas or properties that you might have gone into two years ago or three years ago. Well, and that's, that's the difference. There's kind of the, the two strategies. I mean, for us, we kind of want to continue to stay in the game because that's just our choice. But the other thing is, is being liquid um, when we're kind of maybe hitting in, you know, facing a downturn or we're at mm -hmm. the bottom and we're kind of like starting to trend up because a lot of our clients in the last recession, they tripled, quadrupled, or even more their wealth during those periods crazy. because they had cash Downtown when other people did it. Crazy. You know? And, and to be able, that's so important because to be able to be in that position, you know, the liquidity and the mobility are two things that are very, very important today. And that's the reason why we're seeing a big, this, not to transition into some, but that's the reason why we're seeing a lot more people wanting to rent than own in their personal primary yes. residence. Liquidity and mobility are two things that you they need to They want to be able to move. You need to be Grant able to take says. advantage of opportunity. Yeah. Well, and we are trying to teach this too because we have a lot of friends and some clients that are you know, wanting to get into real estate and they're mm -hmm. like, do you think I should buy a house right now? And mm -hmm. I'm like, you know the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Why I mean, are we, you asking? We, you're we literally, asking me we because you already we, know the we, answer. We yeah. sold, we rent, yeah. we own our real estate portfolio. We're exchanging out because we feel like we've tapped out. We can't go rent higher and there's equity. We're going to reposition it. So we make a really good cash flow. But we have other stuff coming back. So we have the opportunity because of loss carry forward. So we're like, do we sell this property, take a gain, and right. sit on cash? And we're definitely, I mean, we have a goal by the end of this year. We're definitely going to be sitting on nice liquidity, mm -hmm. and we'll just kind of sit back and watch. Isn't that a great position to be in? No, but it is because, um, a lot. I mean, this is what I tell people. Over the last 10 years, since the last cycle 10 years, I just got, and I just got educated. Yeah. Before that, I was entering a cycle where I was like, I'm in crisis mode. Yeah. I'm just holding on behind a boat by dear life. Like, how am I going to get to this? Now I'm like, oh, I, it's crazy to come into a market. And you're like on the forefront. You're like, wow. Because I know last time if you had the money I did now, how much better you can be. And that's what I tell people. The value in that cycle to go yeah. through it. A mas and, 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 double and, and, masters and, and agreement. Don't beat yourself up if you missed it. But the value in the cycle just to witness Learn it from is it. like so powerful yeah because now what you're doing is you're positioning yourself well we and get another at bat it's coming up you know it might not so, be, as, it might not be yeah. as good but it's another at bat it's another right. one and yeah. that's that's what's so important and you know like i always tell people is like you're never going to catch the bottom or the top but that middle part is okay you just got to know where you are in the cycle yeah and that's what's important yeah so yeah i i mean we're we're on the same page i mean we're in that we're getting li liquid as well we've gotten rid of most of our properties we got one more to go and then, you know, we're going to see what happens mm -hmm. and reposition money in different places. We're actually uh, rolling out for our clientele um, a joint venture opportunity for our clients to get into multifamily anywhere between 16 and 60 unit properties in California, Arizona, Nevada, uh, Utah, and Texas. And we've gotten a great response from people wanting to do that. So. You know, that's something that we're rolling out as well from, Very cool. from our standpoint. So basically like a syndication? Well, I don't want to say syndication because okay. there's a lot of legalities in right. forms okay. of doing the okay. syndication. But so, a joint venture, or a, maybe a small pool of one or two people, depending on like the Like-minded people who want to own. Correct. Depending yeah. on the uh, amount of, of money 
that is in that certain pool, yeah. that we'd be able to do something cool. like that. And the asset itself too. And it's smart because uh, people come to me all the time for advice on what they should do. And I always say, if it were me, I would try to, um, if I didn't have enough cash, go find other like-minded people who wanted to buy as big of an apartment building as I could Mm -hmm. because 50 grand or 100 grand isn't going to buy anybody anything. So if you could, again, go in Mm -hmm. with somebody who's got the experience in management Mm -hmm. and owning and operating and renovations and be able to get get in the game Mm because that's the hardest thing. It's like that first step step is so hard for people to get in. How right. do I do it? Right. So but I also think, you know, I also think that there's a big fear of missing out aspect in that too. So a lot of people, a lot of people, and we've all seen this. I've been on stage with people who have talked about, you know, I had $15 million in assets and I lost it all in the last yeah. downturn. You're always yeah. going to find the guy or the girl who's <laughs> lost it all in the last downturn. And you're like, how the hell did you do that? Right. Like, so, yeah. so the fear of missing out on a lot of people also compels them to make poor decisions. Absolutely, I Some agree. Some of the best deals I've ever made that's... are the ones I haven't. Yeah. You know, and you hear yeah. that a lot of people say that, but it's true. I look back on some properties. I just looked back on a property we were going to buy in Beaumont, Texas. And this was several years ago. It was a pretty good-sized complex. And we decided not to go on that because we really weren't confident in the um, in the um, job centers around the area. Mm-hmm. So we pulled out, and within like three weeks later, they had the hurricane come through, and it like annihilated this complex. And I'm not joking. Wow. I mean, I'm sure there would have been insurance and everything that would have been on it, but just imagine the headache. Yeah. Your roof's gone. Yeah. You've got, you know, 70 people who need to be relocated. Yeah. And I was just thinking to myself, did I get lucky, or did my knowledge of maybe something else stop me from making this bad decision that would have ultimately led to me having to deal with probably a year of headaches, right? you know? And it's that type of stuff where you don't make those decisions. You don't make that. Instead of being like, oh, I've got to make my first deal. I've got to do something. So I run and I jump in on some property and it's not the best deal. No, I mean, you definitely have to do your due diligence because we are not at that point in the market right now where you just throw your money in and you just get lucky and write it up. No, Yeah, if you're buying in 2009, 10, 11, you can just... Just throw your right. money and you could buy right. a dump and you're going to make it's worth more right. now, right? I mean, right. I mean, we wish we had more money in those times to of buy course. more things. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I am seeing that more and more. And that is another sign of like the market taking a shift is every single person who can scrape together a little bit of money wants to own yes. real estate. And remember so. those people like real estate was the devil in 2008 or nine. Yeah. It was like, right. it sucks. I hate real estate. So it's always the thing when you hear, you know, people talking about it in, you know, restaurants and stuff like that, you know that it's, it's time to be a little cautious. And you hear that a lot, a lot more chatter, a lot more people who have no business, you know, that's not their primary thing and they just have a regular job talking about buying property and stuff like that. That's some time to take notice of what's going on and maybe it's not the best time just to evaluate it. Yeah, there's some, there is some big, big owners here that um, they're so big that they just continue to buy because it's not going to make a match. Oh, yeah. like, no, you know there's different scales. So people, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, guys but that's only a three, tax issue. Units and stuff like that. That's not. That, they care less about what the market's going to be. Exactly. That's they why people like we're grants buying. I'm like, guys, this is a different yeah, level. A whole nother level. It doesn't. Yeah, we do right. tell people that like your model for buying your first building, your first investment is completely different than the guy who owns a thousand oh, yeah. units yeah. or five hundred oh, yeah. units or whatever. The, 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 the machine that's flowing is like he's got to get the tax right. problem. He's like. Trying to, yeah. His problem is not being able to get rid of money fast enough. <laughs> exactly. right. That's right. his problem. Right. So, right. So, I mean, when. when so, don't I'm, compare your. That's what people I tell people. Like, <laughs> this is why Chris and I are like, we're, we're the same thing. We're like, we're preaching it because we're like, look, I know people go see this guy that's speaking on stage on 3,000 units <laughs> like this. And it's uh, whether it's Grant or somebody else, it's like, guys, that's. I get it, but he's speaking, but you got to understand that's not you. That's Don't not put you. yourself. And that wasn't in. his strategy when he was you. Right, right. You he, know, he, he has, he has graduated to that strategy. Right, right. So absolutely. But yeah, there's different, you know, there's different, and so many people project other things on themselves or what they want to do, but you're right about that. Absolutely different stage of <laughs> investing. Yeah. And you know, if you're here in San Diego and you're looking at, you know, buying a property, there's still like the partner we have, the partner we have when we look at it, it's it's a great deal for us. There's still we hear yeah. great deals going down all the time. And then there's people that want to go buy, you know, uh, units for five hundred thousand a door. And like you said, they're like, hey, uh, one's yeah. five yeah. units the, vacant. The you gotta rent it. I can't. Sure. Yeah. You're and like, then, you know what else is another tell that we find from these people is that they talk a lot about the interest rate. And I'll get, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll say this. This Gosh. is pretty funny. So a quarter point, half point to them is like the world. Yeah. Well, we know if, or I should say, I know if there's a good deal to be had, 
I care less what the rate is. I want the deal. Thank I know you. what right. it's going to. Yeah. I know what it's yeah. going to yield yeah. on the back end. <laughs> yes. So if I have to take the hit for a quarter point, even a point, whatever, I don't care. It's that's, a business that's decision. A, exactly. That's why, not an emotional. But for them, it is a different thing. Well, oh man, you know my rate is X, and now I'm, you know, I got it. And it's really like you when you have a conversation, it's a tell. Yeah. That they're maybe not as astute in that you know knowledge of of what they're doing, or they have concerns that are greater. Than they should because they're not positioned properly in that asset. It's funny Absolutely. when I when I when I talk to clients since I do residential finance and they talk about rate, mm -hmm. I go, you know, it's funny. They go, why? I go, when you write your check after you close this every month, do you look at the payment, the rate? They're like, the payment. I go, there you go. Yeah. But then like if, if with the building, it's like I got to get this rate. I'm like, like sometimes we bought in buildings with private money. Like why would you do that? I'm like because. It's a building this, and we didn't have a million down right. at the time, plus another three fifty for the right. rehab. I'm like, I'm not. You're paying opportunity costs, right? So I'm like, I'm gonna leverage <laughs> yeah. it, and I know I'm gonna get there with the rent. So you know, right. and I tell people, it's just built in the model, like you said. It's like I don't care. I know in the, I know what I'm go, I know where I'm going. I know where it's gonna val be valued at in two years. I'm not right. worried about like, oh gosh, I'm paying eight percent and two points to this guy. Yeah. Who cares? Don't get me wrong, so, it is a little painful looking at the closing yeah, statement, but, but you, <laughs> no, you still yeah, yeah, do yeah. it. You know, right. you're like you bastards. But, <laughs> but yeah. that's always a point of contention exactly it yeah. seems like yeah, is that, it is. Is that rate it yeah. comes up and you can you mm -hmm. can hear that when people talk and it's a tell can you tell us a little bit about your company like um just kind of like how many people you have um kind of a little bit how you run it how you're having sure. such success great reviews and then also are you doing in-house maintenance and rehab or is that all outsourced and kind of how you kind of handle the whole you know sure. kit and caboodle so we run our company by attrition we do not have a big corporate model. We have five people who are in our company, and we have um, a virtual assistant who actually was one of our team members, but she relocated to Virginia, and she was so important to our team that we wanted to keep her on, and well, we figured out a way to do so. Awesome. And she's a she's a really big member of the team, and it helps out. So we have a small staff, small team, and we work by systems. Everything is systemized. Um, you know, my team understands what's required of them. They always go above and beyond. The uh, great reviews come from the process that we look at it as one of our assets as well. I mean, that's the way we take it on when we manage. We give the type of advice that sometimes people don't want to hear, but when it works out, they understand why. And we don't take on properties that we don't believe in, and mm -hmm. that's really important. Um, and it's a matter of also knowing a little bit about the owner, okay. you know, what their goals are, what they want to do with the property, that type of stuff. So that's why that's how we've built a culture in our company that makes sense and has allowed us to enjoy life while also building an awesome business here in San Diego. Now, as far as in-house uh, maintenance, we don't have in-house maintenance. That's a point of contention for a lot of people. They feel like if you have uh, an income stream off of something like that, you're going to nickel and dime them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't have an in-house maintenance, but we do have uh, people that we regularly go to. I mean, every day we are hit up by vendors wanting to be on our team because of the volume we do and because of the stability. So we have selected people that we've chosen that they know our system. It's not their system. They're not going out to a property doing what they do. They're going out to a property doing what we want them to do. Awesome. And they adhere to that. And that if they don't, they're gone. And you know, we run a tight ship, but we have a great team that does all the maintenance. We have a great team that, that does all of the actual management, if you would. And then we utilize our systems, and we stay in contact a lot, and we do that through automation. We utilize automation as well. So it's a matter of a lot of different touch points. We yeah. have the personal touch point as well as the automated touch point. We keep our brand in front of people. We treat our properties as if they were ours. And we only take on the properties that we want to work with in the areas that we want to work in. So a question in regards to your systems, because I did just recently read um, the e e myth. I don't know if you've read it. It's the entrepreneurial myth, and it's about running your business like a franchise, and it's all about systems right. and putting. So, did you create for your business like an operations manual for, like, because you talk so much about the systems, but I feel like you must have like written it down and put it on paper, and you train it and all of that. Is that how it works in your company? We have, you know, our system is is. It's, we have yes, we have a system that's written down. Yeah. But it's basically comes from, you know, years of understanding mm -hmm. what's required from for property management. Right. So in, in our in our pre meeting, I mentioned to you guys when you asked me, you know, do you do us? I've done every aspect of my business mm -hmm. personally myself at one point in time. Wow. So I know how it should be done. I know when you do a move in inspection what needs to be done. 
I know right. what a move out inspection needs to be done. I know, you know, what it takes uh, when you have a request that comes in. I know what it, what a um, you know a maintenance request that's uh, um, uh, like, uh, like that comes in that's not valid. Mm-hmm. All those type of things, and I've taught that to my team over the over time through video and through Got just it. discussion and that type of stuff. So they have a grasp of what to expect. And if they don't, we have the type of um, culture where we come together. You know, nobody's just guessing. It's okay to ask questions in our office. It's okay to find out, so, to do something better and to get, you know, better educated. And we actually promote that. We do a lot of, uh, through our legal counsel, we do a lot of training in the office for fair housing. We do a lot of stuff to keep them knowledgeable about what's happening in the market and what's going on with laws and what's required of us as a property management company. So we don't want anybody, you know, having to guess or feeling like they're doing something wrong. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um. What do you, th- if somebody's hiring a property management company, yeah. what do you think the, they should be looking for and the type of questions they should be asking? Right, oh, that's great. So a lot of times you get the wrong questions. And I actually put a blog post together on this, yeah. what wrong questions to ask. So people ask, you know, how many properties do you manage? That's yeah. not a great question <laughs> to ask. A better question would be how many properties do you manage in my area? Okay, so that's good a good question. question right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing would be uh, a lot of times people ask, how many people do you have on your team? You know? That's not so much of a great question to ask. You want to ask, you know, questions about what type of value am I going to get from your team? You know, that instead of, you know, what your cost is or something like that. A lot of times first first call or first email is what's how much fee? do you guys charge? Yeah, what's your What fee? do you charge? You know, because they're looking for that number. And, you know, we have to advise them that, you know, it depends on the property and your location. For sure. And that's true because there's a difference between managing a one-bedroom condo in La Jolla and managing, you know, a three-bedroom house in, in Claremont. There's just a little bit of difference. For sure. So we want to find that out. And instead of asking cost, ask them what type of value are you going to get. So that's important. Also asking where's your property going to be exposed in terms of the marketing, you know. And then actually go and look up. Go and see if you can find their Facebook page. Do they have an Instagram presence? Do they have a YouTube page? Where are they? Because if they don't, guess what? Your property is not going to be there either. If you can't find them, you're not going to be able to find your property when they're supposed to be marketing. Yeah. So, that's a good point. you know, and that's especially point. today, it's important to have those platforms where your property is out and then syndicate it out to everything else. So, I mean, yeah. we have, you know, when we put our properties out for marketing, they're syndicated out to, I don't know, I think it's like 50, 60. It's different. ridiculous it, now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exposed thoroughly. But your software does that for you. Like, it does. Yeah, we have a cool. system in place that does that. It's awesome. And then, you know, majority of our stuff, though, comes from our Instagram and Facebook. You would be surprised how many people hit us up on Facebook and Instagram wanting to know if they can get a private showing of the property or stuff wow. like that. So a lot of people don't have those results. And, and getting back to one of your earlier questions, like, you know, I've tried this. It doesn't work. I'm moving yeah. on. It didn't start that way. It was yeah. a process. It took time for us to get that way. But, you know, by continuing to try and push our properties out, letting realtors know, hey, if you have anybody, mm-hmm. letting the community know, um, collaborating with other people, that type of stuff, all that makes a difference. Are you utilizing self showings? That's a big concern for people. No. Yeah, we don't believe in that. Yeah, okay. No, I mean, there's there's a lot of people who put you know self showings, or they'll have uh, leave. A, have you even seen people leave keys and lock boxes? I've and seen give that out the with codes. owners. It's crazy. No, I because yeah. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that with my property. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell Mr. Somebody's and Ms. Have a party property your- <laughs> owner to do it for theirs. Right. So that gets back to treating the property as if as I would with my own rentals. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't send somebody to the property without being there. I want a company team member there to represent us and to show the property the proper way. Are, mo- are, are all your tenants paying online? Uh, 96% of them are. The 4% that aren't have been with us a long time. We understand their reasons and we make uh, accommodations for that. But 96% of our tenants are paying online. Absolutely. We don't accept cash. Yeah. You know, all that type of stuff. I, you know, I could tell you stories. You know, yeah. Oh, God. You sure. But it's so much easier to have it all online, and that's something that uh, was one of those point of contentions back in 2007 or so when we went on cloud computing. We implemented that back then, okay. and it was like 40%, mm-hmm. and it's just continually, gradually increased to the point where eventually we'll have 100% online. Yeah, you're, you know? you're getting there. I mean, we actually probably have, I don't want to call it a penalty, but there's a, a surcharge or so if you're not paying online. So we're pushing that aspect of it. because you're incentivizing we, people. Right. It's yeah. easier for them and you. It is. Yeah. And it's an easy button. And anytime we can hit the, you know, you can hit the easy button to work with our company, that's something that makes sense for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to somebody um, with all your experience that's going to self-manage your property? 
you know, it's hard because right away you expect me to be like, you know, don't self-manage your property. And there are certain circumstances where people, you know, should self-manage their property and there's circumstances where they shouldn't. I look at it from a time aspect of it. We, we have three main types of clients and three different avatars. One is our uh, accidental landlords, the people who never had, you know, thought they were going to manage a property. Uh, maybe they are being relocated or they received the property through a death in the family or something like that. They come to us and we help them with the management. Then we have the diversifier, and those are people who are typically baby boomers. Uh, they've got a little bit of money, and their financial advisor told them, go and diversify, you know, the yeah. big diversify thing. Go yeah. and diversify. So they go out and they buy a two-bedroom condo or a house in Claremont, and then they don't know what to do with it, and they come to us and we help them. And then you have the true and tried real estate investor. And that's the person who's actively making their living investing in real estate. Yep. And they understand that their time is best utilized growing their portfolio and getting assets under ownership as opposed to running around and managing their property. I tell so people that the, all the time. Those are the three types of people that we service. So the person who's self-managing, I say, look at the tax for one. Just look at the tax benefits of having a management company. You can write us off. Okay, you, typically you won't be able to write off your time. I mean, there are a lot of people, there are tax laws in place that will allow you to do that. Most people don't know how to do that. If they're managing their property, they're not at that aspect of it. And then not only just the tax purposes of it, but your own personal time, you know? Your you know, time is worth something. Your time is, time yeah. is the most valuable thing Absolutely. we have. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So if you're married and have children, like I am, and I have four children, yeah. okay, and that range from, you know, six to 19, I want to spend most of my time with my kids yeah. and my family. I want to go with my wife to dinner. I want to hang out in baseball games and ballet and gymnastics and do that type of stuff. I don't want to be dealing with the properties. I just want to receive that nice little check right. yeah. the first of the month. Right? Yeah. So there's a difference between cash and checks and then running around and dealing with you know managing your property. Yeah. So it depends on the person. And I'm not going to just go full-on property manager on you and say, oh, you got to be doing it. But there are some reasons why it totally makes sense to have a strong management company managing your property. Spend your time wisely, whatever you like to do with it. Get the tax um, you know, benefit from it. And it's a different perspective than you know, all the hassles of dealing with somebody calling you up in the middle of the night or you know, issues going astray while you're on vacation, those type of things. You don't need that headache. That's not really what real estate investing is about, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think, too, that as an owner, we've seen it with so many people as they tend to get really emotionally involved in the things with their that happen at their property and with their residents, and that's not a way to operate a business either. So, nope. so you just nailed on it. Treat your properties like a business. Mm -hmm. It's a business venture, and that's the way you need so, to treat it. That's the that's the piece of advice we always give. Treat your property like a business. Absolutely, keep the emotion out of it. Yeah, and then if you're looking at a lot of these people too that are out there teaching about marketing and business and how to be successful in business, the first thing they'll tell you is if this don't don't do the things that you don't want to do or right. the things that you're not good at. Delegate. So uh, you work? property Delegate. management <laughs> is part of that business. Yes. Is if that's not your business you have no business doing it. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. kind of been our philosophy. And I definitely don't push anybody into management either. I know that some people want to learn, you know, they want to like roll up their sleeves and learn it the hard way. Right. Um, so more power to them. But I think they'll end up in that same place because like you said, when you're on vacation or you can't spend time with your family, um, property man management makes sense. And us too. I mean, we don't manage our own properties because I think my time is more valuable <laughs> at the making moment. money to buy more or finding properties to Absolutely. invest in. Right. So. And, and that's one of the reasons also why we created the tenant finder company that we have mm -hmm. is that a lot of people, you know, don't want full management, but they hate the tedious task of finding a qualified tenant. Absolutely. So we created a company that does exactly that. It finds their tenant and then we keep them in our funnel and we keep in front of them and we teach them all the things they need to be doing. And after, you know, usually six to seven months of receiving all the stuff they should be doing and all the stuff, they call us up and say, hey, we want you to manage the property. And then we just move them right over to our San Diego. Is that a free service? Manager. It's not a free service. Okay. We, ch we charge 50% of the gross monthly rent. Okay. So if it's proposed, say, $2,000 a month, it's $1,000, and that's only paid after we find the qualified tenant. It's a great service that we I provide. Bet. 
There's no upfront fees, and you only pay for you know results, and you get a qualified tenant. We do all the That's showings, smart. leasing, and everything. It's so smart too because we've seen so many owners that are self-managing oh, that don't have a credit service oh, to run God. credit, oh. yeah. and they just grab whatever lease they can find for free on the internet that's right. available, or they go to the apartment owners association. They have no idea what disclosures need to be included. Right. So don't I, that's, do that. Yeah, that Gosh. service alone is will cost you huge so for much people. money. They think they're a bad tenant will kill your cash. Cash flow. They'll take. Absolutely. They'll Especially cost in a you house. Money. So we yeah. we actually have a thing that I put out recently. Uh, the average cost of a bad tenant is right between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars. True. So nobody believes it until they go yeah. through it. Oh, and they're absolutely. like, you were. I mean, yeah, I had a friend, and they live house and two units, and she you know, had this tenant for twenty years, and she says, okay, well, what should I do? And I said, well, number one, so that's my red flag right there. You just said tenant for 20 years. That's a red flag. No, no, yeah. no. So I yeah, said, what is. I do at number one is you're not going to listen to me, but this is a business and you're going to be emotional. So you're not going to listen to me. I said, go knock on his door, cash your keys and get him out. Yep. She calls me back four months later. Well, we didn't take your advice. <laughs> he just went out. We lost four months of rent and we got to rehab it. I go, and I told you how much, it, yeah, it costs us about 10, 12 grand. I said, and she goes, we're never doing that again. And I said, and I always tell people, please do not, if you live in the house, do not become friends with your, th this is a business. You can say, hey guys, but this isn't come over for coffee and tea. I, I, I like, tell people all the time that don't, don't, don't get your tenant from your office. Yeah. Oh, no. I see that all the time. Well, my, you know, the person who works with me is going to rent it or, you know, even, even family sometimes it's a business. You know, now if you're in a position, I won't where rent to my family. You're, if you're in a no, position, no, no. exactly. And well, we I, I will as long as you're willing to evict them. I said, if you want to rent your mom, mom, if you don't pay, you're yeah. getting evicted. What? We have a whole e <laughs> we have like, a whole ebook yeah. on all this stuff yeah. that goes through. Just so many okay. things we're talking about. I love it because there's so many like little red flags when I hear somebody say, "Oh, it's such a great tenant. They've been there for 14 years." Yeah. And automatically, I'm saying, "Okay, the rent oh, is way gosh. under market. The place is not being taken care of. They're probably hanging out with the tenant on the yeah. weekends. Uh. The liberties that this tenant is taking on this rental property owner is probably unbelievable." Yep. And, you know, that's the thing that goes through my mind when they're thinking, I've done such a great job, I've kept this tenant, because there is a fear of having to re-rent a property. And, oh, yeah. And, and it's really not that big of a deal. It's not because, do it the right especially way. for you, you're like, right. this, what's the problem? You're in San Diego, exactly. and you're in a good location. Please right. let me make you more money, you right. know? it's like. And, but there is a difference between a tenant and a qualified tenant. Oh. So there's a big difference between those two. The, it's like you Absolutely. said, it's the, it's from... Well, whatever the word you use where it's the pain in the ass or what were you saying earlier where everything's the pain in the ass the property's bad the, the, the cycle bad. it's the, the suck tenant itself, yeah. that yeah. will suck the life right yeah, out of you absolutely i mean um so another question just a little different is what advice would you give to somebody and i know you get this a lot because you're doing speaking and you get asked a lot it's to somebody that's new to property manager or starting a business what advice what was the probably the best advice they're going to need New to property management, starting the business, the first thing I would do is be is to get with, like, there's a lot of Facebook groups out there right now that are good. Um, there's some Facebook groups where there's a lot of other property managers in there. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't have this stuff 10 years ago. Yeah. So you kind of had to learn on your own or, you know, your competitors weren't going to tell you. Right. But there's ways to use to leverage social right now to get on there and see what other people are going through. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely something I would do uh, is to just get, and when you start anything, is to get knowledge in it. You know, right. learn about what you need to do. Um, prior to doing it. And that's the first thing I would advise them is to learn about this business a little bit. Go go at it from that aspect. Before just jumping right in. I would. Yeah. I just think I just think that, you know, you in property management there's some landmines you can land on that are For pretty sure. big. It's a little different. When you land yourself into a fair housing issue, that's a problem. Fair housing, you don't handle your trust accounts properly, oh, you don't mingling you know. or something like exactly. that. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of little things that are difficult to you know to maintain and that's why we get back to the whole thing with with realtors who are moonlighting yeah. as you know doing property management not not very wise in my opinion and I i'm agree. not just saying that from a property manager uh, owning a property management company i'm saying that just from a litigious situation yeah because they haven't done the homework they're just right. taking it on to bring in some cash flow right and a lot of yeah. brokerages around town are stopping it I, I've noticed, yeah, a lot of the bigger um, brokers just don't want that. that I think the BREs, they're getting audits, and I think they're just like, they're going through it, and I think it's like, this isn't worth it. Let's get rid of it. I Absolutely. think, yeah, I think that's Absolutely. what it is. So, so, I mean, I think that's a positive. I oh, I do positive. too. I agree. I In the United States, we are probably a decade behind. Uh, the UK and Australia in terms of what they're doing with property management. Really? They, yeah. They have really um, 
I never knew that. They have really pull, they, they have better systems over there and they have better uh, restrictions and compliance in the UK and in Australia for property management that we don't have here. Now, I'm not saying I'm in favor of that, but I still think that there's there needs to be some type of um, pulling together of the industry. Yeah, you don't think somebody should be able to just walk in and yeah. just start a company yeah. because... There's some states you don't even need to be licensed. You know, it's crazy. So here in California, you need to have a broker's license. But I think there's some states, and I don't know them offhand, so I'm not going to say them, but there's some states where you don't even need to have a license. That's so you could be crazy. managing somebody's property, handling their, their you know, trust funds and all that type of stuff, and not even be governed by any government entity or anything like that. So there's some danger that's happening there, some dangerous stuff that's well, going on. Well, it is even, even though, um, thankfully, in California, you have to be licensed. It is interesting, though, that you could just go get one license to do all these different things in real estate and not really know how to do any of them. Like you've got this license and you could be a property manager or you could be a realtor or you could do commercial loans. I guess you've got to get NMLS to be yeah, residential. But right. there they, are they a lot of different ship. things you can do in real estate just with this one license mm -hmm. that doesn't give you any specific training. Well, I mean, even theoretically, you don't even really need a real estate license. You can have a business and professions license. Right. So, yeah, yeah I mean, there's, there's, a lot of, there, there's a lot of people that are in our industry that probably shouldn't be. And we see that when the cycle is going to turn, you're going to see a lot of those people go Flushes back to doing out. what they should be doing. Yeah. And yeah. that's healthy. Yeah. And I think that as the disruptors come down the road and they're, they're knocking at the door now, that there will be a major overhaul of our industry, whether that's on the real estate sales and broker side and also the property management side. And it's necessary. It's just, I agree. It's necessary. A consolidation is, is probably necessary just from the standpoint of compliance mm -hmm. as well as just service you know, expected and required for yeah. the industry. Absolutely. What do you, I know, cause I know you got a lot of events and you're obviously kind of like paying attention. What are you kind of seeing or hearing or what's your kind of thoughts on what disruption you think might come down and when we'll really start seeing more of an effect than just hearing about, it? I mean, I know we here can talk more you know, detail probably we know, but what are you kind of seeing and feeling going to all these events and stuff? Sure. So on the real estate side, you're already seeing it. So yep. on the broker side, you're seeing, you know, Redfin rolled out their 1% listing fee. Um, people are losing their minds with that. But honestly, you know, I say this and real estate agents really get pissed off when I say it. If you are not selling over $1 million properties continually, your value really, you really can't say anything that you have above and beyond value that somebody comes in at 1%. What are you going to tell me? Your marketing is so much better. At this point, marketing is is been relegated to everybody has the same options in terms of marketing. Especially if right? you're, you're a track home anything. community, right? right. That's right. even worse So for you. you're really not going to be doing anything better above and beyond than what Redfin's agents at 1% are going to be doing. Now, people pay, when you're selling properties here in California, that 1 million probably is not the best barometer. Yeah. 3 million, 4 million and up, you're paying for that individual's clientele. Who they know, right. the places they go, they have invested time, money to build up that audience to where they can reach out and say, I've got this pocket listing or I've got this property, and they can reach a group of people that have the means in order to to make a move on that property, and there's value there. And they're doing more marketing, like with drones and exactly. video and they're all that. They're spending this. a lot yeah. of money. And it's international there's, marketing as yeah. well. So yep. there's value in that real estate agent, realtor side of mm -hmm. people on the upper end of sales. There really isn't anything. You're selling a you know, $400,000, $500,000, six, seven dollars $700,000 house, you really can't the convince me yeah. that you're going to do something above and beyond that's going to justify the other 5%. I'm right. just being real, right? Yeah. I'm just being real. So we're already seeing that with Redfin. Um, Facebook is going to jump into that as well. Oh, Am I are, mentioned huh? this earlier. Amazon, Amazon Facebook, yeah. you know, Redfin. Um, they're all they're getting all, ready. They're all getting in it because they have the platform, they have the inventory, and they already have the systems in place. They're going to, you know, you can't compete with that. Right. So when they come down, they're going to come down hard and they're going to force consolidation, which is necessary. They're going to do the same thing in the property management industry. You're already starting to see it where they're, you know, looking at, you know, basically taking the properties and then bunching them together to market off to certain property management companies that are willing to pay for the leads. So that's like phase one. Mm -hmm. So phase two is they just now move on beyond that and get their own property managers who are part of their organization who manage the properties and they just kill all the mom and pops. And that's phase two probably. I mean, you know, they, they have the time, the means, and the know-how to go about this where it's inevitably going to happen. And that's going to happen within the next, I think, five to seven years. It's happening in financing too. I mean, Kenny's yeah. seeing it on the residential oh, yeah. side. Oh, yeah. 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 That's why uh, you got to start 
that's why you put your money and start working it elsewhere so you're not sitting here dependent. Because or you build your audience. Yeah. You know, you build your audience. Oh, yeah. Both, yeah. You, know, you got to build your audience. I say that all the time. You know, build your audience. You've got to build that audience. And, and most of these, these the, for them to work, they've got to go out and kind of do the bread and butter stuff. So you could go and, like you said, the niche, when you're the million-dollar listing guy, they're going to be like, hey, we're probably not going to get too many $10, $20 million listings or $5 million because that's – it's too much of a pain in the ass. We want the million and a half down where we can just boom. We, that's where right. we can really do well. And even with loans too, I think they're looking for the cookie cutter person. If somebody has a little real estate investor guy with 12 properties, it's like, yeah, you know what? Go to Kenny because that doesn't go in our system. The guy behind the counter is like, what? How do I look at this? So yeah. that's where like we kind of get a little bit of benefit. Well, it's everything that can be systemized, basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. And I had this conversation with, with some people in the software industry of, for mm -hmm. property management. And, you know, it's really not that big of a stretch to think all they really need to do is start buying up some of the property management software companies. Mm -hmm. You know, Amazon has, re you know, unlimited money. They have the money. They can go and buy up property management software companies. Now they have access to every account. Yardy, real there. page. There, yeah. yeah. And, and they're in. Yeah. That's it. And, you know, you'd be a fool not to sell, you know, whatever they throw at you f for the valuation. So, I mean, it's, it's not that far stretched that, they're nope. gonna, that this is going to happen very quickly. And it's yeah. going to be a shock to a lot of people. It's going to be a shock. And then, you know, you always hear the people talking about, well, you know, but that's there's 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 no personnel, personal feeling to all that. You know, honestly, that only goes so far. Yeah. You know, it only really goes so far. So, you know, you nobody nobody really thought Uber was going to take off. All right. And now, you know, when's the last time you guys were in a taxi? And I, you don't, I don't even see them anymore. But, but exactly. Like they're here's gone. A, here's, almost. A, here's the other problem: is you're like, I don't. Where is my taxi? Yeah, right. Hey, are you coming? Like yeah, you, yeah. you, nobody, you know, like just hit the button. I can track you. You're coming or not. So yeah. I, I just think we live in a world like you said, where you got to build your brand, and that's what you have. That's what it is. You have you have to build your brand. You so I was at I was at a, a really cool event downtown. Um, I got invited to. I, I forget the name. It was called uh, Elevator Night San Diego. It was really cool. Is that where we're in my lab? So? Uh, no, it okay. was, uh, but Billy was there. Okay. Billy Jean was there. But I was probably one of the older guys in the building. But I was there, and um, somebody said something that I wrote down. It was so impactful that I wrote down. And um, I think it was Danny Fleshman said that in the future, business people, they want people to be as big as corporations in terms of their personal brand. So that entrepreneurs can kind of control the society and the culture of society and put their time and money towards things that matter to them. And I think that's really impactful yeah. because if you think about it, you know, your personal brand, right now we're all trying to build our personal brand. You may have a thousand followers or a hundred thousand, whatever, but the value in that personal brand, the recognition of who you are and being able to be known around, you know, your city, your state, your country, the world is so important that that will be the no. future of business. We're yeah. not going to be doing business anymore with the logo. We're going to be yeah. doing business with each one of our faces. When I look and I say, oh, there's Crystal. Oh, there's Kenny. Yeah. And I'm going to know. And that's going to be how you go forward in terms of how you do business. And I just love that thought process. No, you're right. And we, we've we been in real estate, you know, 2004, 2003. And if I would tell you up till probably this year we did marketing you would laugh if i told you what we did for marketing so let's just say we didn't do any marketing we got an f yeah. of marketing right and we never we we still have referrals but we realized we're like but why are we not building the brand and spending the time it's a it's a no-brainer when we start hearing these people we're like why not be bit that you you know so right we went from nothing to let's do a podcast and yeah. so people are like whoa you guys went from nothing to this this is crazy and i said no this is just I'm not going to sit here in five years and go, oh my gosh, I'm in panic mode. Do it. I'm like, in five years, you and right. I will, ha we're already five years ahead of you guys. Right. We're not, we're not going to be scared of talking in front of a camera. Exactly. Yeah. That's the same thing <laughs> I just say. It's like when I first started out, you know, getting in front of Snapchat was so real and so raw that it was, it wasn't live, but it was the closest thing to live. Yeah. That that made me so comfortable doing all the other stuff. There wasn't that learning curve that so many people are dealing with right now. The fear of getting in front of doing a, you know a video or it's even crazy. sitting down and doing a podcast. Yeah, it's like we're just talking. We're just you know yeah. we're just vibing. We're just conversating. And it's not like you know a lot of people you were mentioning. I thought was pretty funny earlier, Kenny. When people come in and it's like this major interview. You know? Yeah, that's how they're, they're tense. Yeah, yes. like you're putting on a different face. You have to be who you are. 
when you're doing podcasts, when you're doing video, even when, when you speak, out about, when you even speak, when you speak, you're up there. Exactly. You're like, this is me. Like if I'm talking to that's my it. wife in the audience, right. like it's just, I'm that's just going to tell you how it is. Well, I'm and it's it. true. Cause in the beginning, when we first started, we were trying to plan everything. And then I was like, it's so funny how you get so caught up in planning. Yeah. And then you're like, wait a second. I know this. This is what I do. That's what it. am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's so you have to. So when people get nervous, I do tell them that I'm like, this is what you do. Just talk about it. Right. Yeah. It's right. like we're get just out having this. So I remember yeah. to hit on the points I want to ask you. I'm right. not I'm, even the question. I'm like, I I'm not even going to I just it's a question for me to read. You but know, that is right. a big shift because even Mitch in our office, we were having him do some videos and he did not want to do it. OK, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's, yeah. Wow. But now the other day I said, Mitch, you're doing a great job. He's like, it's what I do. I love it. And it's just kind of yeah. like, oh, this it. is what I do. Of course I'm going to do And I love to job. look back yeah. on our videos when we first started. Yeah. Oh. Liz and I, when we first started, um, when, when Facebook Live first came out, we did a rent time show. Okay. Right? Similar to like a podcast, but yeah. it, was just a, it was just video. That's and cool. it's so funny. Like our first couple ones were kind of stiff. We're like, hey, you know, it's yeah. pretty <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. funny. But, you know, it's neat to look back on that stuff and just see how it's progressed. But doing that initially has gotten us to the point where we're comfortable doing this type of stuff. Just like, you know, throwing out the podcast right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, whatever comes up next, you'll easily gravitate towards and have the confidence to go right in without, you know, worrying about, you know, what to say or how to say it. You're just going to feel comfortable doing it. I mean, we walk around. I walk around my house all day long doing Instagram stories. Yeah. yeah. It's like. No big deal. You know, kids in the background, you know, my wife, yeah. we're doing stuff. That's my life. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. It's not like I'm telling, setting people up and, you know, you stand here, you stand right. there. And it's just, it's natural now. It's become a part of your everyday life. Right. It's a habit now. It is. Yeah. And it's and it's funny because it's coming, the space is becoming crowded. But it's funny when we had Skylar on. Yeah. Um, you know, he knows the numbers and things. And I know you asked me today, so I'm like, I don't really pay attention to numbers. I'm probably so much like Gary Vee. I'm like, I'm just like bring people on and push content, content, content. Because I know not like how many followers you have. Yeah. And, and it's just that, like yeah. with real estate is we buy and do this. I'm not sitting there going, oh look what I I just keep right. I just keep going, 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 and eventually you can stop and go, holy shit, I created this. And with this, I think we just keep going, going, going. But I realize, you know, Skylar was saying like a lot of people, Kenny, they start a podcast and I didn't even think about it. He goes, they'll do one or two things like, oh, I didn't get an audience and they quit. Yeah. He goes ninety. 7% of podcasts started. I don't even know if they're just around after a certain time. I go, really? He goes, no, literally. He knows. He's like, yeah. Kenny, they just, if they don't see that instant gratification, over, they go and post a couple things online. They're like this, like, I didn't get 100 likes. I'm not doing it anymore. Right. And like you said here and said, it's also yeah, work though. I've been they, doing they this over and over. Though, also, exactly. You know? Exactly. That's why, that's yeah. why with you, you know, it's just like, it didn't, when you posted to say, hey, I'm going to post this um, house on Instagram the first time, I didn't get anything. Now, like, people yeah. know. He'll post on Instagram. I'm going to check out if he has anything right. new coming. They right. know it's repetition. That. Exactly. He's also putting out the good content. And Skyler will probably tell you he's the first one. You know, he's been doing his podcast, which is awesome for a while now. Yeah. yeah. But he'll he'll be the first one to probably tell you that when he first started, you know, he didn't have that many viewers, if yeah. any. You yeah. know, they were first learning the whole thing. Yeah. So just like we all do, they're like, yeah. we're all starting. That's why even for us with Gary Vee, and I've told people this too, when that was kind of how we got our start. Like, Hey, we need to get on the ball here is like, I heard something with Gary Vee. I'm like, Kenny, you got to hear this guy. And then Kenny yeah. was obsessed after that. But we went back and looked at his like first wine library episode. Okay, cool. Oh my, it's the best. But it's so cool. Cause you're like, okay. Cause now Gary Vee is like Gary Vee. Like he, he's so comfortable, but he started from the same place. He just started right. before us. Right. So well, even like, Grant said, Grant says like, start from this exactly. place and yeah. keep moving. That's right. what people and Grant's like, my first year I did videos, I get 40,000 views my whole entire year right. putting all this stuff. I get 40,000 views in one video now, right. one. And then, you know, and then the amount of money he spends on marketing is crazy. But people don't realize, like, they just, like we were saying with the with the real estate owners, they look at the guy that's like, I got a 1,000 units. No, just he started one place, too, right. like, right here right. where we are. So. Right. But just um, comparing yourself to other people's position is probably not the best thing to do. Just do no. you. Yes. Do yeah. you. Be consistent. Be real. Yes. That's so important. You know, don't put on the show. Nobody wants to see that. Just be you. And everybody's interesting. I find so many different people across so many different genres interesting that it's that it's just like fascinating to me. Well, we all yeah. have our story, right? So, right. and that is interesting because right. it's unique. It's different. Right. That's what I tell a lot of property so. managers is, you know, we all basically kind of do the same thing. But the only thing that's different is our unique individual story and the culture of our companies. And if you yeah. share that, people will definitely gravitate towards you. Yes. Um, two more questions. Um, do you do you think or feel that property management is the most important part of owning real estate? No. You don't? No. 
I think owning real estate is the most important part of owning real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it goes back to you have to start, right? Yeah. So you have to own real estate. I think that's the most important thing in my in my opinion. Um, you know, I, once again, I'm a ent- real estate entrepreneur, mm-hmm. owns property management companies, but um, owning real estate is, is the your most important thing to most you. Most important thing. That's to your me. why. Is well, my why. My why is is different. I have yeah. a couple whys. I have a short term why is just to be a better version of myself every year, a better father, better husband, awesome. you know, a better businessman, a better social media content provider, better whatever okay. every year. But my long term why is generational wealth. Yeah. You know, um, options. I want to give my kids the options to, if my daughter wants to go to France and, and learn cooking for a year, I want her to be able to do that That's without awesome. having to worry about, you know, where's the money going to come from or being stuck in some crappy job or something like that. So my long-term why is generational wealth, but my, you know, yearly why is just to be a better version of myself every year. So what's what's next for you guys? Next for us is to build out this um this program where we're buying more properties, bigger properties with cool. our clientele. Scalable. Scalable. Absolutely. Uh, continuing to grow our businesses and, you know, just add more businesses. I want to add more to our empire. We're, we're what you call growing an empire, building an empire. And that's yes. what I've been focused on for a long time. That's a great book, by the way. You know what? I'm going to get you that book if you haven't already read it by Elena Cardone. Yeah, I have not read it. Okay. I'm going to get you that book. Um, my wife, Elizabeth, uh, recently finished it. She handed it off to me. Um, I ran through it in two days. I'm probably going to run through it again. Uh, love the book, and it's something that we've been doing for a long time with our family. You know, we, like I mentioned, we have four kids. It's been me and my Crazy. wife, two businesses. They're homeschooled. We've got a lot going on. Wow! So, I mean, we do. God bless a lot. you. Oh, it's my wife. I give my wife the credit. She I means she's, she's awesome. A, she's, she's incredible. She's badass. I take, yeah. you know, I take the credit sometimes. But <laughs> she's she's awesome, and it's it's having that mentality of we're setting this up, we're punting. You know, ourselves per se, so that we can set this up for the kids for generational wealth so that they can understand, you know, not be lazy and not take action because yeah. they need to. I don't think you'll allow them. No, we won't. There's no way. But yeah. they also need to understand about having options out there. And I think, unfortunately, so many people just don't, don't understand the importance of options and being able yeah, to. Yeah, people do life. things because they have to, and that's right. not a great place to come from. I, th- yeah. I think we have a very similar why and, you know, mindset there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're just, it's, uh, that's why I rant so much. I keep telling people, like, I go, don't go talk to your 30-year-old friend that has all this crap. Go talk to the six-year-old guy that was 30 that had all the crap that never invested yeah. his money and ask him, would you have bought more cars or yeah. watches and crap or would you have bought real estate or something, right. you know, or bought, gone into business you could right. sell? Like, nobody at 60 and 70 is going, man, I should have bought a second home or a third home. They're like, I should have bought more apartments. I should have done this. And I think that's why I tell people, like, everybody's living this, but what are you gonna, who wants to grind when you're 60? I mean, I just right. see it. And we're yeah, I mean, lucky we're it's surrounded It's sexy by it. to have the hot cars and all that type of stuff. That'll come in time when you put it in. You know, if you choose to. Some people don't even choose yeah. to. You know, for me, it's spending time with my family and doing Absolutely. stuff like that. You know, I do have Traveling. I do have nice things, but it's not. I'm not going to go crazy. If you ask me, it's so funny. My, my uh, six-year-old son, soon to be seven, this this month says, Dad, would you rather have a Lambo or an apartment complex? And then we go through this whole thing, and I'll say, well, how many units in the complex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll say, he'll say um, worth a million dollars. And I'll say, okay, well, how much is the Lambo worth? And he'll say, uh, $3 million. And I'll say, well, I'm going to take the Lambo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, we, we do these yeah. little things where I'm trying to teach him that, you know, it's not about just the material things, but I'm giving, you know, some thought process to the thing that provides, you know, income as opposed to the car. And he gets that now. And I tell him, you know, listen, if you want the Lambo, you just got to go and get the complex. And the complex will give you the Lambo. Yes, yes. And he's that's, starting that's, to get that's, that's, that. That's, and it's so funny because he's like, now he likes, when we drive around town, he's like, will that complex give me a Lambo? I'm like, absolutely. That yeah, that's cool. Few. <laughs> that's, uh, no, that's, it's that's good. Though. It's kind of, um, I always tell Crystal, like Robert Kiyosaki, um, I listen to a lot of his podcasts. First book I ever read that Rich changed Dad, poor Dad. everything. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yep. Agreed. Changed yeah. my whole perspective on everything. Honestly, Liz and I, when we read that book, we we like looked. I think we spent like five minutes just looking at each other, like, yeah. You did you get? It's a, cool that you guys like read these things together and then oh, come yeah. back and talk about it. It's we just do cool that. to see a part. I mean, we do, but we do a lot of the It's same cool stuff, to see yeah. that kind of like teamwork and partnership. Do you guys get together weekly. I recommend it if you don't. Oh. Go grab a glass of wine or an iced tea or something and just get together weekly and vibe. 
It's important. We do. We've tried to be, we've gotten a little bit out of it with a five month five old months, and now so we're we kind of yeah, coming yeah. back totally and making understand. the schedule. But yeah. But totally we, the cool thing is yeah. we work together, so we'll go grab lunch. Yeah. But you know, Crystal and I, so right now we, we're going, um, well, we'll tell, we don't care. You'll probably get it. We're actually working on building a sales funnel. Cool. So when we, that's why I tell people, you know, people don't understand what it takes. So we go home, we are with the kiddo, do mm -hmm. that. And then when the kiddo goes down, it's like, sales funnel and she's on a 30 day challenge. So it's like one to two hours yeah. of cool. homework. Yeah. So we're going through and we're talking. So it's just a constant pushing, 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 because it's like, I want to do it now, you know? But you know what guys, it's fun. And oh, oh we have fun with it. You know, a lot of people are like, how do you do that? How do you work together? It's not a we chore to me. It. It's yeah. life. It's yeah. what we do. It's a passion. It's what we do. We have so much fun. Yeah. You know, my wife and I, we love talking about this stuff. Yeah. You know, I get fired up easily. So if I see something to where, like I'll see something, somebody does something so easy that I've made so hard, I'll get fired up because I'm pissed that yeah. I, didn't, I didn't put that together faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And faster. she's like, oh, chill. Yeah. I'm like, I can't believe it took me so long to realize uh -huh. that, you know, it was funny. So, yeah, I, th I just think that mindset and togetherness and all that is good. That's it's awesome. Positive. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much. Thank you Spend guys. your time. I mean, this is um, this is great. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value of this, and especially if anybody owns real estate or your property manager or anything. I mean, you got a lot of value. Absolutely. I and I and I and I have to say, I do appreciate you putting yourself out there and working on your brand and doing this stuff because I know we're doing it, and you've been doing it longer. It's a lot of work. It's time. And I think well, if people, I tell people, if you would just do it and get over yourself the benefits you're going to get from it, not just maybe with your business, but just how you think about yourself and everything. It's just such a big like improvement for yourself to get over that hump. You just feel so much better when you can look at the phone and just talk into it and not worry about what somebody's going to comment or say. And if somebody says something bad, it should just fuel you more to be like, cool, well, I'm going to be better then or whatever. I absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah. So yeah, guys, congratulations on the podcast. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys having me on. And I'm excited to be here today. Thank you so awesome. much. Cool. And Thanks. we'll uh, link where everybody can find you. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, where is the best thing to find you? I'm on all the social platforms. So you can go, my name is a little bit longer, but it's Salvatore, S-A-L-V-A-T-O-R-E underscore Frischia. And that's F-R-I-S-C-I-A. And then my company, San Diego Premier Property Management, is at SDP Management. Cool. You can find cool. us on all the platforms. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Salvatore. Awesome.